welcome to video two on managing your audio. Um, first thing I need to say is a small disclaimer. Um, the reason I, I need to um, put in a disclaimer is because a lot of people who first start using Cubase, um, they create all their projects in the one folder, which means they've only got one audio folder. Um, and uh, the, the process I'm about to show you deletes files from the audio folder. So um, if you use this process and you inadvertently delete files or um, lose your tracks or anything goes wrong with Cubase or your computer or anything like that, I am not responsible. Um, I am advising you now, use this at your own risk and only if you're 100% sure that you've got good folder and audio file management. By that I mean you don't have one folder like this and all your CPRs are in there and all your audio files are in there. By good folder management, I mean something like this. You've got a Cubase song file folder on your desktop with different folders for each one that you, for each Cubase file that you've started. So again, uh, Sound Megas, or Mark Gray as my um, other name is, uh, accepts no responsibility for any, any damage done using this process. Sorry about that, but you've got to say it. Um, right, without further ado, let's go. First thing you need to do is go File, Preferences. Find the editing um, section and then go to the audio um, section of the editing um, list. Find On Import Audio Files and change it to Open Options Dialog. I'll tell you why in a minute. Hit Apply then OK. OK, the next thing you need to do is open a pool. And you can do this through Project, Pool or Control P. It's up to you. Learn the shortcut I advise you to. Control P. Right, so what we've got here is our audio folder. That directly relates to um, the audio folder in our track, but these are the only files that are um, shown up in the um, track at the moment. So what we need to do, just in case there's any audio files missing from the actual project, um, the first thing we need to do is select the audio folder, right-click and select um, Prepare Archive. Pool is ready for archive. Okay, great. Okay, the next thing we need to do is select Import and then find the audio file of the track that you're working with now. So again, I'll just reiterate, if you've been saving all your Cubase files in one folder and you've only got one audio folder, don't do this. Use the method I showed you before in the other video. Do it on that. Create a, um, a backup um, folder of uh, some other some track um, or whatever folder it is that you've been keeping all your Cubase um, tracks in. And, and then use that one to do this so you can learn how to do it. But anyway, so you find the um, the project that you're working on, which is this one. You open it up, go to the audio folder and select all the files, all the audio files. And then hit open and you'll see them all um, in a second being brought into the pool. First thing that pops up is the import options dialog box. Top one, copy files to work in directory. Tick that one, it will save you so much grief you won't believe it. What that means is every time from now on, every audio file that you create in a Cubase project, so if you sing into it, if you record a guitar, bass, drums, synth, whatever it might be, and you create an audio file, it will instantly be copied into the audio folder. So in here. Any file that you import into your Cubase project from your iPod, a CD, a mini disc, um, somewhere else on your hard drive, um, on an external drive. Every time you import something into your Cubase project, it'll instantly copy a working cop copy that file, make a copy of that file into the working directory. This is the working directory. Convert and copy to project if needed. It's up to you. Basically, what that means is if you've got that ticked, any file that you um, import in will be converted to the um, the project settings, which I shall show you in a second. Split multi-channel files does exactly what it says on the tin. Um, it will split multi-channel files into multi-channel mono files. Um, but all we want is copy files to work in directory. Select do not ask again. Hit OK, and it will bring them all in. OK, sometimes you get this. Media base is already in pool. Now, if it's already there, there's no point in creating a new one, so just hit reuse. Drums is already there, you use, reuse, reuse. That can get extremely tedious. 
if you've got hundreds of files. But it's better to do this and make sure that you get all the files that you need than to go through hours and hours and hours creating a great track, copying the files, sticking them onto a CD, sending them to some master in house to sort out, only to find out that they phone you in three days saying, oh, for some reason, 25% of your audio files are missing. We'll need to, can you send us again? And you go, what? And you've just wasted six or maybe even a week. So it's definitely something that you want to look out for. Just to show you something, file, preferences, editing, audio. Now, you can see this has changed. So on import audio files, use settings. And that's the setting we selected. Remember in the little box out of the three, we selected that. So it's now changed, which means every project that you do from now on will conform to this. Okay, back to the pool. Control P. Right, a couple of things we need to do here. First thing, select the audio folder, right click, and um, the first thing we want to do is remove unused media. So what it's going to do now is, is look through the pool and look at the project, and anything that's not in the project will be deleted. Simple. Right click, remove unused media, trash, so it's dropped them all into the trash can. Select the trash can, right click and select empty trash and erase. Don't remove from pool because if you remove from pool it will leave them in the audio folder. Hit erase. Error, some files were not deleted, right, okay. Um, if that comes up, that's okay, just hit okay, go back to trash, right click, go remove unused media again, trash, and they're gone this time. Now if you go back to the audio folder, there you go. All you can see is what's left. Now, as you can see, um, something it's left everything called bass and drums. But that's okay. Um, that's because they're directly related to these files. Um, so that's what we want. We know that all the files that are there, as you can notice, um, if I go um, arrange icons by name, um, you can see drums, 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 bass, bass, bass. It's just, it's all the same files, and that's where it's been used more than once. Um, or if it's, sorry, these are the original files. Um, the MP3s, well, they really shouldn't be there, actually. Um, did we import those? Strange how it says it's a WAV file. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, what we've just done is the process that you follow and you get rid of everything that shouldn't be there. Obviously, for some reason, Cubase is thinking that they should be there. And um, so we're left with these four files. Um, now, um, what, now what we need to do is, um, if we go like that, just check everything's cool. There's no missing files. We don't need to convert anything. I don't, I don't need to worry about that. I'll teach you that later. Um, okay, so that's it. So now we just go... Um, we've already prepared the archive. Yeah, one step you should look at, if you select the audio files, right-click and go to Minimize File, um, now you can see that Minimize File is greyed out here. The reason it's greyed out is because there's no edits or any offline processing um, being done on these files. But if there was... You can right click, select minimize file, and it will embed all the offline processing and etc. onto the audio files, tidy everything up for you so that you so that the audio files are completely one hundred percent ready. So now that's it. Um uh, something uh, something I should explain. When if you do go minimize file, and once you minimize the files, it'll give you the option to save. Obviously, we just want to save it now, so we just go save as. Find the folder. This is um, manage audio one, two. That's it. And that's it. So we end up with a nice clean folder. We got rid of all those other audio files. Um, we end up with a folder that's. Um, how many? Um, okay, yeah, there's a backup file in there. We don't need that. Just delete that. That's because I've got Cubase set to backup once every five minutes. Um, so let's have a look. 
Okay, 22.8 megabytes. Imagine, now, remember, there, there must have been another 25 audio files in there, so it would have been a lot bigger. So um, you've ended up with a nice clean um, uh, project folder. You know that all the audio used in the projects there, um, the images are there, that's just for drawing the images. That's it. So now you could just rar that up, stick it to a CD or whatever, send it off to your um, your mastering office or um, if someone wants to remix or whatever it may be and, and you can be completely confident that everything that's in here on your system will be there on their system. Okay, that's manage on, man, managing audio 2. Um, complete and I think that's the last video in the kind of the basic stuff um, so um, the other videos that will come after this will be starting to get into the nitty gritty okay so I hope you have enjoyed them so far and I'll see you soon